Hello, I'm Father Robert Spitzer, the president of the Maja Center of Reason and Faith. I'm here today to talk to you about the Catholic understanding of the scientific evidence for God. We'll be featuring in this Blink series some of the major highlights, some of the new evidence that has come out in the last few years. Well, is there purpose in the universe? And what's the intellectual basis for it? Let me just start off with a, a term called constants. A, a, a constant is, it's just a number, like the speed of light constant, 300,000 kilometers per second or 186,000 miles per second. And when you look at uh, these constants, these numbers, uh, you'll notice that they actually control all of the equations of physics. Now, they just don't control the equations of physics in my mind. They actually control the equations of physics in nature, in the world, in reality. And we call that, well, the laws of physics or the laws of nature itself. So these numbers then, they actually control the laws of nature. Now, there are 17 of these constants, and perhaps you've heard of a few of them. Uh, the speed of light constant, C, which I've just mentioned, or H bar, which is Planck's constant. Uh, and also, you, you might have heard of uh, the constants associated with the four forces in our universe. The strong nuclear force has a strong nuclear force coupling constant. And the gravitational force, you might have learned that in your high school physics class. G, capital G, which is uh, the constant for gravity, or the constant for the weak force. Uh, you also have three three constants associated with the electromagnetic force, the mass of the proton, the mass of the electron, and, and uh, uh, the electromagnetic charge. Now, if you take a look at all of uh, these constants, there's 17 of them, uh, what you'll notice is this, that if those numbers varied ever so slightly, just higher or lower, they would have given rise to a universe in which no life form could develop literally a universe in which it would be impossible to have not just our life forms, but any kind of life form. And so this makes it a, a rather formidable kind of proof. But, but let me just try and explain a little further. Let's take a few examples. If the gravitational constant or the weak force constant had been off by one part in 10 to the 50, higher or lower. You know what I mean? One part in 10 to the 50. That's a decimal point with 49 zeros and a one. An exceedingly small amount, exceedingly small fraction. Just one part in 10 to the 50 higher or one part in 10 to the 50 lower. Either the universe would have been continuously exploding in its expansion, which would have been very bad for any life form, or it would have collapsed in upon itself into a black hole crushing everything toward almost an infinite uh, density of mass energy. Again, very bad for life forms. Are we simply lucky? Did this happen by pure chance that those two constants have precisely the right value? Let me explain again. I mean, if the strong nuclear force coupling constant had been only 2% higher, we'd have no hydrogen in our universe at all. Very bad for life forms, alternatively. If it had been 2% lower, we would have had no element heavier than hydrogen, equally bad for life forms since there'd be no carbon or any other bonding element that was possible. Think about that. Just 2% higher or lower and life's impossible. Or, or let me give you another one, just, just to kind of seal it home for you. If you just, the gravitational constant were off ever so slightly, the electromagnetic charge were ever so slightly varied, or the mass of the proton compared to the mass of the electron varied ever so slightly, higher or lower, either every star in our universe would have been a blue giant exploding and burning everything in sight, very bad for life forms, or every star in our universe would have been a red dwarf, which would not have given off enough radiation. Everything would have frozen to death. I mean, are you kidding me? Just, just thinking about these constants alone, 
I mean, one part in 10 to the 50 for gravity and, and weak force. One, two uh, percent uh, higher or lower for strong nuclear force constant. For ever so slightly, just, you know, in significant fractions, higher or lower for the weak force constant or the, the, uh, the uh, excuse me, the gravitational constant or the electromagnetic force uh, or, 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 or the uh, mass of the proton compared to the mass of the electron. And it's all over. It's all over. And by the way, there are many, many other such uh, remarkable anthropic coincidences that keep the possibility of life alive. It's at this juncture then that we can only, we have to say this, and virtually every physicist does, it is impossible to explain the, the numbers behind these constants by a pure chance one try, one off try. That's impossible to do. So physicists have come up with either a super calculating, super intelligent creator that designs all the values of the constants right at the beginning of the universe. For example, Fred Hoyle, the great uh, English physicist. Or alternatively, that there must have been a multiverse with trillions and trillions trillions of in this in this kind of uh, mega universe with all of its bubble universes that gets a new try every time the problem is the multiverse hypothesis right now is fraught with all kinds of problems leaving a most remarkable thought well perhaps the universe was created by a super calculating super intelligent transcendent creative force. We call it God. You can learn a lot more through our new film documentary, Cosmic Origins, featuring eight world-class physicists available through Ignatius Press.